Aboriginal TV, Channel 4. Putting Aboriginal news first. The Federal Minister for Indigenous Health, Ken Wyatt AM, was in Darwin to announce $1.2 million to Red Dust Role Models Program in Central Australia, funding support for mental health and youth suicide prevention for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth in the Northern Territory. The work they've been doing has been invaluable in supporting people at the community level. This allows them to continue to expand their work, deliver on the ground. They employ local people, involve local people, as opposed to people coming in and telling a community what they need. I want to compliment Red Dust for their commitment, but also their respect in regards to the integrity of working with Aboriginal people at the local level. Now, the women are the primary drivers working with the foundation. So we recognise, and I recognise, that our women are our strength. And while we have them involved in all programs from headspace through to work that's happening in the community level, as we heard this morning, women are involved strongly. Red Dust have been working for 20 years and currently provide services to children and young people in Alice Springs and eight remote communities. Red Dust CEO Scott Sterling and Chief Strategic Advisor Jonathan Lindsay Japajari Hermawan welcomed the funding commitment. This funding is going to allow us to not only further develop the programs we've got, but also to expand our footprint to reach more people. Uh, we've got a program model that's quite unique. What we've recognised is that the strength comes from building capacity within community, a train the trainer model so that we can bring outside skills and expertise, but we don't say that's the solution. What we're doing is we're building individuals' capacity to be able to draw on the strengths that exist already and have existed for tens of thousands of years and combine those with other skills and strengths from the worlds that surround young people. Tackling the issues of suicide, we talked about the whole continuum of ageing, uh, that whilst the focus is on youth, the issues raised were around women, elders, people coming out of prison, and what was tremendous was the way in which all of the participants embraced the need to focus on a whole of community. Indigenous knowledge systems are not being valued, and we want um, that to be something that, that changes, and we want to put that money into local people uh, to employ them and also to support their knowledge systems so that we can develop the program further, and that ultimately goes back to the people. And the expertise that we bring as an organisation is we have access to people in, who have very good qualifications in a whole range of different areas, sporting backgrounds, music backgrounds, uh, scientific backgrounds, technological backgrounds, and so on and so forth, and communities just want to see that they can do that stuff too that to move forward into the, into the future, it's not about an Aboriginal young fella and young woman just knowing about their culture, it's also about them saying, these are the skills that I have um, in my non-Indigenous world that I want to be able to, to develop uh, and to use for the betterment of my own people, the betterment of my own family. So yes, absolutely, we, we believe that it will be direct uh, impact on the community in that regard. For us, if it comes to primary prevention of, of youth suicide and hopelessness, uh, we want to and offset their suffering, we want to give them a sense of A, pride in themselves culturally, that they can be strong on their community and speak language, but also they can go to the city and learn uh, in an educated Western context and bring those skills back so they can be authentically both Indigenous and both educated and both successful and thrive in both, of, both sides of their worlds. Aboriginal TV, Channel 4. Putting Aboriginal news first. Hello.